We're joined now from the State Department by Ambassador to Ghana, Jean Kretz, and Charge d'Affaires, Eric Wong, uh, who represents the United States in Madagascar. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Appreciate you joining us on this uh, Bloomberg Google Hangout from the U.S. Africa Business Forum. Uh, uh, Ambassador Kretz, let me, uh, let me start with you. I know you've spent uh, a lot of time uh, in Africa, in Libya as well as Ghana and some other places. Uh, what does the Africa t of today look like versus 10, 15 years ago? And I know we're talking about a lot of different regions, a lot of different countries, but if there's, if there's sort of one overriding theme, and maybe there isn't, what, what would it be in terms of the direction of Africa? Well, I think if you, uh, you know, I think the perception that we've had in the United States and certainly among uh, American businesses is an Africa of uh, disease and conflict and uh, poverty and, uh, you know, all the nasty things that uh, all mankind. Uh, so, uh, after my uh, years in Libya and certainly now after my experience in Ghana, it's a vital, uh, vibrant place full of opportunity, full of people with. Uh, with desires and ambitions, people who want to be connected to the world, people who want to uh, have a, a better lifestyle for themselves and their children, uh, people who want to have American technology, who want to be close to the United States. So it's a very vibrant and um, uh, just very uh, a challenging environment, but certainly a very vibrant and creative one. Uh, Mr. Wong, uh, Madagascar is a continent away from the United States. That is to say, you have to go all across, uh, all the way over the African continent to get there. Uh, I think a lot of Americans don't uh, necessarily know a lot about Madagascar. What is the state of U.S. investment there? What what kinds of U.S. companies uh, are in Madagascar, and, and where is that headed? Madagascar is going through a sea change right now because there was a military coup d'état in 2009. And as a result, uh, that really stymied a lot of foreign investment, created a lot of perception of political risk. Thankfully, there was an internationally observed election in 2013. Uh, the United States, the European Union, the African Union all lifted sanctions from Madagascar. Uh, before the 2009 coup, Madagascar was exporting about $200 million in clothing and textiles to the United States. Uh, companies like Gap, uh, Levi's, uh, Jordache Jeans were making clothing. Um, in Madagascar with the Goa, uh, the African Growth and Opportunity Act. That was um, suspended after the 2009 coup, and just a few weeks ago, the White House announced Madagascar's restoration of eligibility for a Goa. So textiles is one area. Uh, petroleum is another. Uh, there's a lot of interest in the Mozambique Channel, uh, possible offshore blocks. Uh, Exxon Mobil is one of the companies that uh, active here in Madagascar. There's also uh, some interest in what rare earth metals Madagascar might have. So it's a fourth largest island in the world, about 22 million people, um, and um, a variety of uh, different potential. Ambassador Kretz, I wonder uh, at a meeting like this, this uh, summit, both of you gentlemen are at the State Department right now, I wonder what goes on around it. Uh, what are the kinds of meetings that are going on for uh, folks like yourself, other officials in the State Department, Commerce Department, White House? Can you set the scene a little bit for me? Yeah, uh, well, we have the, the basic, uh, you know, the official uh, uh, events uh, where the White House is very heavily invested. But around this, you have, a, you know, several dozens of maybe even hundreds of, uh, of uh, events where business people uh, are looking to get together with other business people uh, to talk about potential uh, opportunities. You have uh, a very vibrant uh, discussions going on among uh, NGOs in terms of the future of Africa. How do you deal with issues such as climate change? How do you deal with um, a, a generation bulge, uh, a, you know, a very young generation that's coming uh, to the fore? How do you deal with questions of transparency, better governance, etc.? Uh, and then, of course, there are just uh, the, the bilateral meetings that take place between uh, officials of the U.S. government and their uh, their counterparts uh, with these delegations. So the uh, the place is just brimming with activity wherever you look. Uh, yesterday, for example, President Mahama uh, uh, of Ghana um, was at the uh, GE uh, Power uh, presentation, uh, where the where the talk was of uh, how do you uh, what is the future of power in Africa and what are the potential for American investment there. So there, uh, this has really been an all-out across the spectrum kind of, uh, of uh, presentation by America at its best government. NGOs, uh, companies, business, investment, etc. 
And uh, Mr. Wong, you just brought up political turmoil, uh, certainly one of the risks of investment uh, in, uh, in particular African nations. In some nations, there's no, no real risk as far as uh, political turmoil. But we, we see that in various places. Uh, you've talked a little bit about the risk and also about the opportunity. How should American uh, investors uh, and the American public look at uh, risk and reward uh, in Madagascar specifically and in Africa more broadly? I think the challenge for the United States is, is to make African countries in conflict a net contributor as opposed to a consumer of, uh, of military resources. What do I mean by that? If you look at a country like Rwanda that had a genocide that wiped out a quarter of the population in 1994, a decade later in 2003 they were sending troops to Darfur, Sudan. A country like Burundi, which in the early 2000s was going through the war, is now the major contributor to uh, African Union forces in Somalia. So countries like Madagascar, you know, the, the general um, aim is to try to build up their security capacity so that they can contribute uh, military forces to international peacekeeping, you know, whether through the United Nations or the African Union. Um, in the particular case of Madagascar, the, the coup was a, a bloodless coup in 2009. Uh, again, you know, ExxonMobil was uh, one of the most active U.S. companies in Madagascar remains so. A Seaport Corporation is also it's important to note that uh, despite the relative instability of Madagascar compared to other countries in southern Africa, because the, the countries of southern Af Africa really are the most, the most stable, the most economically vibrant uh, compared to perhaps those in the world. But um, one of the biggest uh, investments in Madagascar is the Hamadouli laterite nickel mine, a $7 billion laterite nickel mine, one of the largest projects in sub saharan Africa. And uh, that's just, uh, they just began operations uh, a few years ago. Mr. Wong, mining, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, mining. So, uh, Mr. Wong, I wanted to ask you also, uh, since we've got Ambassador uh, Kretz here, any questions you have about Ghana? Well, I think Ghana is, is universally uh, hailed by many of its African neighbors as a, as a stable, vibrant, prosperous country. Uh, you know, the key to that, uh, obviously, good governance, but... Uh, and I think Ghana is a, is a good model for many of its neighbors. And if I could ask both of you just to explain to folks watching at home exactly, as the lead uh, American agent in a, in a foreign country, what you do in terms of uh, business development or how you help U.S. businesses abroad and how that factors into uh, to U.S. foreign policy. And I'll, I'll ask it to both of you. Ambassador Kretz, if you want to start, please please go ahead. Yeah, I, well, I, I commercial diplomacy uh, has been part of the U.S. diplomatic mission now for many, many years. And uh, it is as uh, vital a function for us as is our political work or consular work. So first of all, we have a, certainly my mission, and I'm sure many of the missions of many of my colleagues, we have an open door policy for business. When, we, when American companies come to Ghana, I want them to stop by, I want to talk to them, I want to give them the best, uh, the lay of the land that we have, etc. When they begin some kind of negotiation or whatever, if they run into a problem, uh, we're there to uh, advocate for them. We, uh, we are very active through our Chamber of Commerce. We try to, uh, if an American company is going to establish a presence in Ghana, we encourage them to uh, join the Chamber of Commerce, and we encourage that organization to act as a body representing um, uh, the American uh, business uh, community. So uh, we are uh, we're fully uh, in sync uh, with our, our commercial uh, partners. And they're, uh, they're an important part of American diplomacy. Mr. Wong, could you add to that a little bit about how the businesses uh, and having U.S. business in a country uh, affect your ability to negotiate with and discuss and talk with the, uh, the host government? Yeah, sure. I mean, there's the both formal and informal things the State Department does. So that we, uh, on the formal side, uh, the State Department uh, contributes to a country commercial guide, an investment climate statement. These are documents that are available to the general public, to potential investors. I think more informally, you know, what's probably valuable is uh, connecting potential investors with key government officials, other stakeholders, uh, other business uh, representatives who are already invested in the country. Uh, here in Madagascar, for example, we have a very active American Chamber of Commerce that uh, uh, tries to promote the interests of, uh, of its members. Um, it's, it's a variety of, of different things um, that the government is doing. 
Charged Affairs Wong, Ambassador Jean Kretz, thank you both for joining us from the State Department. Really appreciate that. Uh, we'll be back on the Bloomberg, Bloomberg Google uh, U.S. Africa Business Forum Hangout uh, a little bit later. Thank you both, gentlemen.